Um, so yeah, welcome in everybody. I know a couple of folks are still trickling in, so that is great. Welcome into the space. Um, we are excited to be here tonight and bring y'all updates and talk a little bit about policy, um, our policies, as well as some other policies um, that are just out there um, in the world, in the movement, whether it's criminal justice reform, abolition, um, health care, whatever it is. Um, but we are going to want to hear from you tonight. So as per usual, um, with all of our monthly member meetings, as I already stated, this call is being recorded so folks can go back and watch it on YouTube um, if they're not able to make it this evening or if you aren't able to stay for the entire time. So that recording will be posted um, sometime in the next week or so on our YouTube page. Um, in terms of our agenda for this evening, um, we are going to be, as always, giving you some organizational updates, um, just talking about some upcoming meetings and events that Initiate Justice has planned, um, and then we will get into our policy updates where I'll pass the mic over to Sarah um, to take us through all of that. We'll do um, just some quick committee um, updates, not really updates, um, just more so let you all know what committees are coming up this month and who's hosting those committees this month. Um, and then we will get into our main program around seven o'clock or so. So tonight, um, we really want to hear from y'all. Um, we spend a good chunk of the year talking about our bills. We bring in um, guest speakers um, to share about the work they're doing and things like that. But tonight, we actually want to hear from some of you, all of you, as a matter of fact, um, where we're going to be opening up the floor for a community conversation. Um, and we just want to know what other bills are out there that maybe some of us don't know about. So if there's a bill or a campaign that you are working on, supporting, know about, all of that good stuff, we would love for you to share it with us this evening and let us know how we can continue to support to get these bills off of the floor. Um, so I'm sure Sarah will touch on this when she did, gives the policy update, but we are very quickly approaching the end of the legislative season. Uh, bills have to be out of their houses of origin by next week, I believe. Um, and so things are moving quite fast and then things are moving on to the governor um, for either a veto or a sign into law. So we wanna know what we need to do as a community to kind of get some of these other bills across the finish line um, so that we can build up better communities, which is what we're all about. So that's gonna be our program this evening, very low key, um, but we're really excited just to be in space and um, have a conversation. And so with that, um, if there are no questions or anything like that, before I get started, I am going to quickly share my screen. Give me two seconds. Awesome. All right, so we are going to start with some organizational updates as always. Uh, so for our organizational updates this month, uh, so we wanted to let y'all know that we are going to be hosting a small community mixer at our office in downtown Los Angeles on Monday, September 18th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. So this is really a chance for us to reconnect with the community as Initiate Justice team members and also for the community and our members um, in the area to reconnect with us. So this will be an in-person event. Um, everybody is invited, whether you are a member, an organizer, a supporter, an ally, whether you just heard about us, whether you've been following us for a long time. If you are going to be in the LA area, Monday, September 18th, please feel free to stop on by. We will have um, some light refreshments going on, um, and it's really just going to be a good time to be in space and be in community, eat together, chill together, all of that good stuff. Um, so we're planning that, and hopefully it'll be a really, really nice night um, and a good start off to that week for everybody. So I want y'all to save the date um, and head on over to our tiny URL link um, where you can RSVP. Um, and so why we need you to RSVP is because the, as we get closer to the date, we will be sending out additional information, um, more park information about parking, what you can expect at the Mixer event, things of that nature. Um, so feel free, head on over to tinyurl.com slash IJ Community Mixer. Um, it'll take you to the Eventbrite. 
um, and you'll be able to sign up and register as, and to attend. Um, and this is a free event. And as always with our events, they are family friendly. Um, so feel free to bring your family, your friends. Um, it is a small community mixer, but we do want it to be lively and engaging for folks. So please feel free um, to stop by and let me know if you have any questions. Another update that we have, just where we're gonna be at in the community, Initiate Justice will be participating in an art walk in Long Beach on Friday, September 22nd from 6 to 9 p.m. So we'll be tabling outside of Page Against the Machine. Um, our inside membership team is coordinating this event. Um, so it's gonna be absolutely amazing, um, but they will be selling art pieces, original pieces of artwork um, from our incarcerated artists, as well as postcards from our 2022 featured artists. And as always, all of these proceeds that we make from any of this art um, go directly to supporting Initiate Justice and the artists themselves. Um, so we're really excited about that. So if you are in the Long Beach area, Friday, September 22nd, 6 to 9 p.m., um, stop on by, come through, um, tell us about yourself, tell us, show friends, um, and get some art and some postcards, because um, they're really, really fabulous. Are there any questions before we move on? Erica, I see your question in the chat about uh, having this be in a PDF to share. So I don't see why not. So I can definitely send this out, the slides out as a PDF um, to folks after the meeting for sure. Any other questions? Awesome, I am not seeing none. So I am going to pass things over to Sarah to get us started with our policy updates. Thanks so much, Adriana. So I'm here to give the policy updates for tonight and specifically, probably most of you are waiting to hear the updates from the suspense file. So we know, um, particularly those of you who have either participated in the Institute of Impacted Leaders on the outside, or our inside organizing curriculum on the inside, you know that the appropriations committee is one of the big like the bottlenecks in the legislative process, right? We know it's like the black box where, as the famous saying goes, appropriations is where good bills go to die, right? So we know that so much happens in appropriations, even though it's framed as just the fiscal, the money committee, so many more variables go into this. And we mentioned last month that we had our upcoming suspense file hearing was coming. So this is where most of the big bills are heard in the appropriations committee. So that was just last Friday. So um, Adriana, you can go ahead and pull up the slides if you don't mind. Thank you. And we'll go into the updates starting with the suspense file with that kind of black box. So I'm sure most of you probably have already heard that Unfortunately, I say with a heavy heart on Friday, uh, our gun enhancement bill, AB 1310 with Assemblymember McKinner, was not heard in appropriations, which means it was held and will not be moving forward this year. So, of course, with appropriations, nothing is ever, there's always surprises, which means nothing is ever a surprise. You're always ready for every possible outcome. But nevertheless, it's always so disheartening, so heartbreaking. And I say that to say that we feel all of your heartbreak and all of your disappointment. And we we see that and we recognize that. And speaking for me and Greg and all of IJ, we hope that you'll join us later this month when policy hosts our community action committee so we can have a meeting space with each other and really talk through. Many of you have questions. What happened? What are we going to do in the future? What does this really mean? How is it possible that a bill can just not be heard and just be held? Uh, so we'll go through all of those things, but I really just wanted to take a moment to say we understand that we understand everyone's disappointment and also really shout out to the author. Thank you, Assemblymember McKenna's office for championing this. We've talked a lot about this since the beginning, that this is a huge bill, a huge lift. It's not the first gun enhancement bill that Initiate Justice has run. So, uh, yeah, just really wanted to start by saying I know a lot of you saw that heartbreaking news. So we wanted to start off the start off the policy updates by saying we see you, we feel you, 
and um, we hope you'll join us at the end of the month so we can we can talk in depth about it. We won't be taking questions about 1310 tonight, but no, it's not. And just I'm not taking a question, but just clarifying something I said. Um, it's not moving forward this legislative session. So it was held. It is not it was not deemed a two year bill. We're in the first of a two-year legislative season, so some bills become two-year bills. That is not the case with 1310. It was held, so it's not moving forward in this specific bill. 1310 is not moving forward. Um, but with that, again, hope you'll join us later this month. Bring all your questions, and and yeah, we hope to see you there. But with that, I'll, I'll move on to some of our other updates. Much, much better news than 1310, I, I am um, relieved to say. So our other two bills on the suspense file on Friday was 11, uh, AB 1186, which was our youth restitution bill, and then also AB 60, which was our restorative justice bill. Both bills passed off of the suspense file and are now onto the Senate floor. And um, yeah, we both are very, also very exciting bills. I know a lot of us were, were looking at 1310, but all of these bills are very, very important and will still have very big impacts. Um, so yeah, thank you for, I guess, I, I don't know if I said this, but thank you all for not only your work on 1310, but the other bills too. It's always an uphill battle, but we did a really good job in this season for a suspense file. We're not alone. The suspense file is always really hard for criminal justice bills. Um, but we did pretty well. And then for AB 581, our Access to Programming Act. So as we've talked about, all prisons have like different requirements for in-prison programming. So we have a bill addressing that. And that bill actually did not have to go through the Appropriations Committee and was automatically on the floor. So that bill will be taken up soon. And as a reminder, we still have ACA 4 by Assemblymember Brian has a different timeline than regular bills, regular legislation, because it is an assembly constitutional amendment. So it really, the deadline is making it to the ballot at the election next year, rather than making it to a certain committee or off the floor by a legislative deadline. And that is still pending an assembly floor vote. Earlier in the year, we strategically held AB 544, the voting in jails bill, as a two-year bill. So earlier I clarified that we're in the first of a two-year legislative session, meaning that some bills can be held this year and then continue um, the following year. And then lastly, I wanted to end on some good news. Um, RJA 3.0 by our champion assembly member Ash Kalra, AB 1118 passed off of the Senate floor yesterday. So this was our follow-up bill to the Racial Justice Act, making sure that the Racial Justice Act is fully implemented. Um, it's likely that we'll see other follow-ups down the road with, their, with um, the Racial Justice Act, or at least a continuing of making sure that we have the funding, the money and the budget to make sure that the Racial Justice Act is fully implemented. But that is really exciting. And that means that essentially the last step is having the governor sign that bill. As a reminder, there's still the concurrence vote, which just means once it went through the first side of the House, once it went through the Assembly and then the Senate, then it needs to go to the Assembly to make sure that they're still good with the bill before going to the governor. But realistically, we're, we're getting close, y'all. We have two more weeks left um, in, the, in this calendar, and then the governor has uh, about 30 days after that to sign it, so to sign all of the bills. So we're getting close to the end. So I'm proud of everyone for every every just being here. I'm proud of you for getting connected, for every post you've shared, every conversation, every email you've sent. If you completed the toolkits um, to send emails to your legislators or any of the lobby days for any of these bills, thank you so much. And um, yeah, I think those are those are all of the updates. But I'll just remind everyone that I hope you join us at the end of the month to, to really talk more in depth about all of these updates. I'll pass back to you, Adriana. Thanks, Sarah. Really appreciate that um, update from you on just the policy. And, you know, we did lose AB 1310, um, but I like to think of it as losing a battle and not necessarily losing the war. Um, so, you know, still have hope that just because this one didn't pass doesn't mean that they're couldn't be future opportunities in the future. Um, so you never know. Um, but thank you so much for that. Join Sarah and Greg, um, our policy team, 
for our, our community action committee at the end of this month. Um, so I'm not seeing, I see lots of thank yous in the chat, lots of love. There's another question on 1310. So I'm just gonna refer to Sarah's early answer on that one of just signing up and registering to come to the community action committee meeting um, at the end of this month. I actually have a slide right now. So I will just transition to that. Um, so speaking of committees, um, so this month um, for our committees, we have our volunteer committee and we have our community action committee. And so this month, our volunteer committee is going to be hosted by our inside organizing team, Adam and Lee. Um, and so join them to learn how you can support current projects and future projects that the team is working on to support our inside organizers. And then the one that everybody in here, I'm sure, will be in attendance, the Community Action Committee, um, and that will be hosted again by our policy team on Wednesday, September 27th at 5.30 p.m. Um, so you can RSVP for either one of those committee meetings or both by heading over to our website calendar. Thank you, Sarah, for dropping the link. Um, but that is initiatejustice.org slash calendar. Um, so you'll see all of our events there and you can always go to that, web, that calendar website um, and RSVP for any of our um, meetings or events that we're having that requires you to do so. Any questions or thoughts on upcoming committees before we move into our main agenda point? Awesome. So I'm really excited about this portion anyways, because I'm really excited to hear from all of y'all. Um, so as I mentioned that we spend a lot of time this year talking about our bills, updating you on our bills, um, but we seldom very didn't create any space um, for y'all to tell us about the bills that you are supporting or that you are working on, um, and things that we should know about, as well as our extended community. So we thought this is the perfect opportunity with bills approaching the end of the season and on their way to the governor's desk. We thought it was the perfect opportunity to hear from y'all on what are the other types of bills that are happening that we can get support on, that we can call our legislators and say, you better vote this on the floor when it gets to you, um, this, that, and the third. So the question that we're posing is, tell us about a bill campaign you're working on um, or know about, right? The status of it and how people can learn more and help push it through to the finish line. Um, so there's lots and lots of bills out there. California loves to make laws. Um, so we're all they're always making um, creating bills and new legislation. So definitely excited to hear from folks. I am going to stop talking. Um, so please feel free. Thank you, um, Kari. I'm going to call on you in a second, but please feel free um, to raise your virtual hands um, or drop some explanations into the chat. Um, that way folks can stay updated and engaged. So uh, Kari, take it away. Hey, uh, I'm Kari Melendez. I'm an organizing support associate with Center for Employment and Opportunities out here based out of Los Angeles. Um, currently, we are co-sponsors. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar, but we are co-sponsors to Senate Bill 94, which is the resentencing reform law for our lifers. Um, just a little run back. Um, we have lifers in there that have been incarcerated that can literally be our great, great grandparents and that we know for sure are not going to come home and cause any more chaos how they put it out there you know um these people are going to come out and change their lives and they have proven that while incarcerated so our goal is to not set them free but give them an opportunity to get resentenced because there is many laws that are in place today that were not in place back then and would have never caused many of these individuals to be given the life sentence so we just want to give them that opportunity to come home, you know, to get their cases looked at. So um, the current status, it did pass assembly appropriations. There was some amendments that we had to do just to get it passed through through a um, SB 94 and LWAP, right? It doesn't just end it, um, Valerie. What it does, it's resentencing the um, formerly LWAPers that we have. So it's like the SB 300, but we're just, went in a little different route. So um, 
What we're asking for right now is because it did pass assembly appropriations, we want phone calls. If you guys are in support, um, we're looking to target certain legislators that haven't really like been um, aboard with us. It impacts us. Yes, so it is a very, thank you so much, Crispy, for that. Um, I wasn't prepared to jump in, but when um, Adriana said it, I was like, let me jump in because it's something that I'm very passionate about. So we are, we have a few targets, you know, around different cities. I can go ahead and um, probably put this on the chat for you guys or send it to Adriana so she could send it out to you guys. Um, I work for Center for Employment and Opportunities. Um, so so you guys can see the targets that we are looking for. The areas that we're mostly looking for are, say, um, it's a big variety, the San Fernando Valley, Los Angeles, Santa Clarita, all around Orange County. It's a big variety of different targets that we want to target. If you guys can go ahead and, and make calls to these legislators, if you guys are a constituent, if you know any constituent to these targets and they're willing to support, I can also put out our toolkit, which helps you in different ways, how to go ahead and post social media, make those phone calls, um, different ways that you can go ahead and do this. And it makes it a lot easier because I know for some of us, it's brand new. It's something new that we're doing, calling legislators. So if you guys are in support, it's something I'm very passionate about. Um, I can go ahead and shoot you guys my email address and we can get in contact and to let you know how it's going to, how you guys can support us. Thank you so much, Carrie. I appreciate all that. Um, I have a question um, because recognizing that some may be new to contacting legislators and things like that, like you said, do y'all have, and forgive me if I missed it, um, but do y'all have like a script or anything that folks can follow like on your website or social media? Oh, wait, I see that Crispy posted a toolkit as well. There you go. Yeah. So the toolkit has all of that and will give you guys how to contact your legislator. You know, can you do social media posts? We have the actual um, the SB94 fact sheet on there too. any of that. And it also gives you a script. It's an amazing toolkit for our first timers. Nice. Thank you so much. And thank you, Crispy, for also sharing with the coming in with the backup share. Appreciate that. And then Erica wants to know if you can share your information, um, please. So like your contact info. On it right now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Crispy, for the support. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Is there anyone else that has a bill that they want to share that needs additional support getting over the finish line? I saw Valerie had put something in the chat. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Valerie. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for this opportunity to share. So I appreciate everybody's uh, support. The bill's called AB, um, it's called the Home Act, excuse me. I wasn't prepared to share, so I'm like trying to remember all the facts. Excuse my presence, uh, I look a little off. Anyways, it's called the Home Act. It's AB 1306. It is um, authored by uh, Assembly Member Carrillo. Um, it basically is stopping the, the pipeline from release from our, uh, CDC, our prison straight to ice. So it stops ice transfers. That's what the bill is. Some people might be familiar two years ago, there was the vision act, but it also presented by Carrillo and that didn't make it, um, past the Senate floor because it didn't have enough votes, but this basically uses existing um, reforms such as elderly release, uh, which is compassionate release, youth offenders, uh, the pre I can't remember all the reforms, but it uses the existing reforms to prevent ICE transfers. So only specific populations will benefit from this. Um, so it, it targets it benefits, excuse me, immigrants who have earned their parole release. So they earn the release. The The fact that they went through the parole or uh, like that's a huge, huge accomplishment right there. Right. And it stops the ICE transfer. So it stops CDCR from having ICE pick up your loved ones and being transferred to ICE. So that's what this bill does. Um, I don't know if anyone has questions for me at the moment, if I didn't make sense, uh, but we it it's going to be called any day to the Senate floor and um, 
a lot of your senators from Orange County area, San Fernando, um, uh, up north, a lot of up north areas is what we're targeting. And a lot of them are, are Democrats that's holding this bill up. It's not the Republicans. It's our Democrats that are holding this, not supporting this bill. Um, hopefully, because they made these um, uh, changes in the bill, we'll get the support this time. So call your state senators um, and ask them to support AB 1306 because we want to unify immigrant families back with their communities. They have earned the release. They, they deserve to be back with all, all of us. So uh, let me see. I think I have two links I can drop if anyone wants information. I think one is a, uh, a toolkit. Let me see if I know how to do this. Okay, let's see. But in the meantime, uh, I'll just put it in. I think that's all I can say about it, uh, other than just call your state senators to support AB 1306. I'm trying to just figure out how to put the link in here. Sorry. That's okay, but I'll take your time and okay. thank you so much um, okay. for for your work on that. I know that you've been working on that for years since since the Vision Act. So yeah, uh, shout out to you as well and your work there. And um, I'm keeping a list. I just wanted to note, I'm keeping a, a list of the bills that are mentioned tonight. And I encourage everyone, call your state senator and call your assembly member. Um, we'll drop the link so you can look them up. And just real quickly, leave a voicemail if you don't want to talk to anybody. Leave your name, where you're registered to vote, or like where you're constituent of, and say, hey, I have a list of bills that I'm supporting that I wanted to register my support for. You don't have to explain the bills or anything, and you can just read these off. Even if it's a Senate bill and you're calling your assembly member, it's going to come back over on concurrence in a little bit, so it's okay. Um, call your state assembly member and your state senator. Just list out these couple bills that we're talking about tonight. And of course, if you're interested, then the IJ bills also. Um, but yeah, it can, and there's all these great toolkits that are getting linked in here as well, if you want more support. But it really can be so simple of just calling and saying, hey, this is who I am. And I want to, I want my support of the following bills to be noted, and then just list the names of them. But yeah, thanks, Val, and, and everyone who shared so far. So it's great to hear from everyone. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. Um, and I'm learning some things as well. So thank y'all for, for sharing. <clears throat> Are there any other bills or campaigns or issue areas that folks are working in um, that they want to draw the community's attention to or get last minute support on um, or anything like that? If not, I have a bill. Jasmine, go ahead. So, hi, everybody. I just wanted to share two uh, organizations that um, are supporting um, us in, in your, and within the state of justice, I've, I've already heard of it before. I'm glad to be on tonight. Um, the first one is 10 Toes In. It's a support, support group for both um, inmates and um, their spouses and partners. So it's, it's really great. And um, Please Google it. I don't have the website, but um, that one and uh, sure. Oh, um, ARC is the other one, and I can't remember. Next month, I'll remember <laughs> for the other. So yeah, and thank you so much. I'm learning a lot, and I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing. And what was the name of the support group that you mentioned? You said the Ten Toes Support Ten Group. Ten toes in. Ten toes, Ten toes in. in. Darlene Burke is the is the founder and the, Okay. The, um, I literally just pulled up the website. So I'm actually gonna drop it in the chat in case folks are interested in looking that up. I don't know why it didn't drop in the chat. There we go. Um, so I just dropped the link in the chat if folks are interested. Um, but definitely go check out their website. It looks like they do really, really incredible work. They have a lot oh. of stuff going on. So, yeah. Sister Warriors is the other one. Sister Warriors Freedom Coalition. And that's that's statewide. Sister Warriors. That's that's another one. And you can Google that too. Yeah. Nice. 
Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you for sharing, Jasmine. And so glad that you can join us. Is this your first meeting with IJ? Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Welcome in. I'm so glad yes. that you're here. <laughs> yes. Please come back. <laughs> awesome. And then, Crispy, I see your hand as well. Um, I want to direct folks to the chat as well. Danielle just uh, dropped it. Uh, Danielle recently heard about AB 600 for resentencing. Also, curious if there was anyone on here that has more information on this. I don't, but if anybody else has information on that, please feel free. Um, but Crispy, I want to circle back to you um, and, and give you the floor. Okay, yeah, just um, some bills through Ella Baker Center, and actually today they act they had uh, an informational meeting about parole hearings, so that's SB 81, and so that's moving to the assembly floor, so um, if you have any assembly members, um, so this, this bill is about bringing more um, uh, transparency to how the parole board makes their decisions because right now they have like a 16% rate of you know, grant rate and that's not very good. Um, and so this was put out by Becker uh, and another one by, so these are from Ella Baker Center. Another one from Ella Baker Center is Canteens. Uh, that's SB 474. That was out by Baker and that's also moving to the assembly floor. And so that one is, I don't know if you know this, <laughs> But inside, people are playing astronom astronomical prices for canteen food. So like a bag of chips is like 10 times the amount that it would be uh, outside or some kind of ridiculous amount. And so they're trying to reduce that, you know, it's just ridiculous. Anyway, so they're trying to reduce that to maybe just 10% over the market price um, because they're saying that 10% would go towards making sure that they have people who can staff the canteens and all this other stuff. So that's a good one, you know, if you've ever had to be in a way, you know, like, you know that the food there sucks. And so canteen food is how most people live. So anyway, so that's a good one. And then um, SB 600, I can, um, I'll get back to you on that. I'll put it in the chat because I have an update on that. Yeah, thanks so much, Crispy. So first, I'll just briefly add to SB 81. Um, SB 81 technically doesn't have any co-sponsors because it's an author sponsored bill, but it's spon it's um I'm trying to find the right phrasing, but it is endorsed by the California Alliance for Parole Reform. So which is made up of EBC, Initiate Justice, Uncommon Law, and a few other organizations working to address parole reform. Um, if you all remember a couple Last year and the year before, we've done some other parole reform work, and this year it took the shape of SB 81, so I'm really glad that you brought that one up, Chris B., um, and hopefully folks make calls about that one as well. Of course, 474, and um, an update on SB 600. Yeah, SB 600 also passed off of the, um, oh, SB, yeah. Yeah, we also passed off of the uh, uh, floor and or off of the suspense file and are onto the floor. So very good news there. And it's not as big of a resentencing bill, but it's still very important. So it kind of makes technical clarifications regarding that the court can recall somebody due to new changes in law. So we've all seen that so many reforms lately are going through, but they're perspective only, right? They're leaving behind so many people who are currently incarcerated. So this is just a, a technical clarification. We've seen Ting do a lot of this around what was originally 1170D re resentencing. Changed, it changed the section of the penal code since then. But Ting is a real, um, flies under the radar when it comes to these kind of technical changes. But these are some, that's another bill that we should, I think it's continuing to try and stay under the radar. So I'm not sure if they're encouraging calls. That's the one flag I wanted to make with AB 600, because they're really trying to is like, hey, this is just a technical fix, not a big resentencing bill. Um, but I'm keeping a list of all the others. And yes, I hope that answered your question. I'm not sure who put that in the chat, but I hope that answered your question about 600 because yeah, it passed off suspense and it's on the floor by assembly member Ting. Nice. I love these flying under the radar type bills. Like nobody knows what's going on. They're just like, oh yeah, pass it. Sounds great. Um, so I love it when things like that fly under the radar and we kind of get our things passed that we need to get passed without raising too much of a of a fuss at the Capitol. So that's always nice. Um, 
I hope I'm going to pronounce your name right. Is it Effie? Um, says, in, if any of these bills don't necessarily target your area, what would be ways to help? I am in Imperial County. I've been on several IJ calls over the past two and a half years, but this is my first call this year. Well, welcome back into space. We are happy to have you back as always. Um, we love it when people come back. We understand life happens and you know things get in the way and your schedule gets compacted, but we're always glad when um, any one of our members, especially our longtime members like yourself, um, are able to, to come back into space. And so usually my advice, and Sarah, please feel free to, to chime in here as well. Um, my advice when you are not in the target area is, do you have friends and family that are in the target areas? Because um, you can always reach out to them and connect with them and encourage them to also be reaching out to their state representatives as well um, if you don't live in the, in, in the target area specifically. Um, so that is something uh, you can always still call these offices, but, in, but because if you're not a constituent, then it's, they don't necessarily have to record that information or anything like that. Um, and so we don't want you wasting your time necessarily. Um, and so best bet is to always just do a lot of outreach, do a lot of reposting on social media, spread the word um, to friends and family that maybe live in those target areas um, so you can really get them to support as well. And Imperial County consists of what cities? That's a good question, I have no idea. I'm not from Imperial County, so I have no idea what cities are out there. Does anybody else know what cities are in, in Imperial County? And then another question, any direction on orgs that can assist um, with deportation? Gerardo, um, are you referring to like organizations that do like direct services or like legal work for folks that are either um, in the process of being deported or could potentially be deported? I just want to make sure I understand your question. Actually, um, can you hear me? Yeah, can hear me? I can hear you. Uh, yes, actually, all of the above. Um, I'm currently in Mexico, Baja California, which just mentioned is what we're trying to do on this end, trying to get direction. Um, there is no reentry groups here in Mexico, uh, in other countries as well. I actually keep in touch with uh, people that have been deported in, in Cambodia, Philippines, Samoa, China. Uh, Central America, El Salvador, Guatemala, Belize, and we are in the same boat and we're trying to get direction. So we're trying to establish something where we can get directed to an org, um, maybe some type of organization on the other side, the U.S. side, that might be able to assist. Um, yeah, and we're trying to get together here as well. So I'm in Kearney and TJ, and uh, we're trying to establish something, but since there is no assistance, we're doing everything on our own. I just walked in from, I just got off work, so I was in a rush. Uh, I got off at 6, the meeting starts at 6. So, but yeah, any information at all. Um, now, I had the ARC, some of the fellows from ARC contact me and asked me for information for them, but I had met, I had reached out to them years ago and said, hey, we need to be established on this thing, and our request to help you, somebody needs to help us. Um, there's a lot of information here that because of our schedules, work schedules here in Mexico are way longer than they are in the U.S. We work 10 to 12 hour schedules daily. And um, so it kind of limits, limits us to gather any information they may need on that end for those that are going to get deported. Um, so we need some type of assistance on that. Um, that's why we're asking any direction, anything will be useful. I know it's a lot, but let me just, just throw that out there real quick. So if anybody hears anything, uh, SBs, then because I actually found the SB 260, even out convicted as an adult, I didn't get my realistic chance of opportunity for pro. Why? Because I was deported. So also working on that, trying to see if there's any information. Because um, I know that they're not deporting a lot of the juveniles that were convicted as adults now. And anyway, we can um, that can uh, uh, help us out. Because there's a lot of us over here. I mean, many have given up. I haven't. I'm trying to. I told them. They told us that we were not going to get out of the prison. Here we are. We are out. But they said we can't go back to the U.S. I said, just give it a minute. We're going to go ahead and try that as well. So we're doing everything in the right way. I volunteer in a lot of um, uh, non-for-profits. I have, there's a story written on me. I can send the link. That's uh, about those that were in YA, YTS. And I'm also going to be in a documentary coming out in December, or no, November. 
this was uh, by a filmmaker in Mexico City. So I've been up and down Mexico reaching out the same way I'm doing here on Zoom. So I thank you for giving me this opportunity for me to speak. Um, yes, I'm trying to get help for myself, but also what can I do to help others? You know, ultimately it's, uh, you know, it helps both ways. What can I do to help you guys? Anybody that hit record it? But what can I also request on that end that I may also be with you? So, but yeah, just keep it short because there's a lot more I can say. But, but thank you for giving me this question. That's dope. Thank you so much for, for speaking out and um, and bringing that the that issue to the table. Really, really do appreciate it. Um, so I'm not sure if you caught it, but we had lots of folks dropping things in the chat as you were speaking. And so um, we've got Homies and Needles in there, um, Homeboy Industries, ICE of California Coalition, Community Coalition, Second Chance Recovery, um, and then Valerie had said to contact also the Asian Prisoner Support Committee. Um, and so there, there's some resources in the chat for you um, to as a starting point. Um, I'm sure all of these organizations kind of intersect and do different things, um, but definitely check out all of those. And um, yeah, if there's anybody else in here that knows of some really great resources um, that Gerardo can look up and utilize, um, please let him know, drop those things in the chat, um, for sure, for sure. And thank you for, for, again, thank you for being here, Gerardo. I appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's always great when we can, uh, remember that even though like here at Initiate Justice, right? Like we focus primarily on state prison and, um, policies and things like that, that impact CDCR specifically. Right. Um, but just because that's what we do doesn't mean that we forget and that we don't acknowledge the fact that incarceration definitely impacts so many communities in so many different ways. One being uh, deportation. And so many communities, whether black, brown, Asian, doesn't matter what it is, if you ain't from here originally, they like to try to deport people. And so um, it's really, really great when we can bring these discussions up and bring these topics up because there might be somebody else who's impacted by the same issue um, going through something that also might be looking for a resource. So um, Gerardo, again, I just wanted to thank you for bringing it up and creating the space here at our September member meeting for you know folks to, to share and chime in. Um, so if there's any, I know, um, also, Lowry shared about the HOME Act earlier, um, so I would also tap in with her as well, because she also might have some additional resources um, that uh, that you can garner from. And then Crispy, oh, go ahead, Gerardo. We about to say something? Yeah, yeah. if anybody has any contact numbers, uh, they can just uh, place on the message. I'll go ahead and, and uh, copy and paste them and reach out a letter time. Um, yeah, because uh, I've actually volunteered one was I was in Soledad, so I know a lot of the a lot of the organizations that are ran now that are really presented strongly, like Art, um, um, uh, Justice, uh, Restorative Justice. A lot of these organizations, a lot of the fellas I know, the founders and all that. So I've been reaching out, and it's just a matter of when we're able to come across. I talked to Jacob. We're supposed to meet up sometime via phone. Um, there's so many. You know, but because we're limited, that we actually have to, as I said, we're constantly working here in order to stay uh, afloat. Um, the the wages, the time, the schedules, everything is kind of difficult here on this end. But that's why I'm out here. It says any information you share with me, I'm going to share with the rest of the fellas. Um, currently, where I'm living at, anybody here was a lifer at one time. There's at least one or two persons that was not. Majority of my lifers, they would they consider, you know. Um, they are deported here. We all know each other. A lot of us were over in Solidarity together and up and down here in uh, TJ, while um, uh, Rojarito, I was in Guadalajara, ran into a lot of people there in Mexico City. Um, there's an organization called Porta House in Mexico City, same thing. They're, they're uh, deportees or retornadas, meaning they just returned to follow their parents because their parents got deported. So, yeah, there's a lot. I just wish that I don't want to take up time because there's a lot of info there that needs to be passed around. But yeah, if anybody has numbers to reach out for a later uh, chit chat, you know, uh, touch bases, brainstorm, I'll be available. I, I'll leave my email as well and uh, my contact number as well. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Drop your 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 contact stuff in the chat. Um, and um, I'm sure folks will reach out and connect. And again, shout out to, to Kari and everybody else for uh, dropping all the resources. It's dope. I love to see it. 
Um, before I pass it over to you, Crispy, I want to pass it over to Sarah really quick. Thanks, Adriana. We'll follow up on a couple other lingering questions in the chat. And then um, it seems like maybe we'll be transitioning to some film talk or changing hearts and minds in other ways. So we'll open the conversation for anybody who wants, uh, Crispy's going to talk about, ask to talk about that. But if anybody has any adjacent things that they want to talk about, and advocacy doesn't always look like policy work. So we can definitely open the conversation up a little bit. But first, I'll just close up some questions in the chat. So the first was a question about the fact sheet for AB 600. I do not have a public fact sheet for AB 600, but you can always contact the author's office and ask them for the author fact sheet. So in that case, it'd be assembly member Ting. Um, but I'll also just pasted the link to the bill's language on Leginfo. The first little summary paragraph in the top isn't too long and it's um, it's pretty straightforward. And then the next, I just wanted to follow up on the question about like, what if I'm not in the target district? Should I still call? It's never, um, I shouldn't say never, because there's always a time, you never know. But, um, and I also mentioned earlier that AB 600 isn't really asking for calls, but it's never usually not harmful for you to be telling your representative what's meaningful to you, what you're passionate about and what you care about. So even if you think that you might be in, not be in a target district, you can always call and um, I put the link in the chat for everyone to be reminded who their state senator is and their assembly member. And then I also am pasting the list of the bills that we talked about in this conversation tonight. So I really do encourage everybody to just call and say, hey, these are the bills I'm passionate about. I'd like you know my, my support to be recorded. And if I missed anything that anybody mentioned, then feel free to add it. Uh, but I think those were those were the only couple of things. And thanks for hosting this topic, Adrian. I love to hear what everybody else is doing and um, involved with. But with that, I'll pass back to you or Crispy or, or whoever. Absolutely, yeah. I'm gonna pass it over to Crispy because I'm very interested and curious to hear um, about this film, um, but also want to also just extend if there's anything else folks want to bring up as well, please feel free to do so. Raise your virtual hands or drop it in the chat um, and we will bring you up so you can kind of share. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be policy related. It could be simple awareness spreading um, of these issues. It could also be like bills that you need to be opposed still. Um, so if you know of bills that need to be opposed still, um, you can also share that as well. Um, but Crispy, I'm going to pass it over to you to share about this film that you mentioned in the chat. Actually, it's not just one film. <laughs> so first, I would like to uplift um, a film called Sanson and Me. You might have heard it, heard about it um, through different channels. And so that one's going to be premiering on PBS, the public broadcasting system, on September 19th. And um, so that's the life story of an incarcerated young man told through traumatic reenactments. So highly recommend. Haven't seen it yet. I'm looking forward to seeing it. But like all of my outlets are saying that's a good one. And the other one is a project that's near and dear to me because it brought me to my abolition lifestyle. 26.2 um, to life. It's a film about um, the Thousand Mile Running Club at San Quentin Prison where um, the people incarcerated learn how to run a marathon inside of a prison, which is not an easy feat. It's like 105 laps, 26.2 miles. That's why we call it 26.2 to life. And um, I'm, I'm very proud of it because it shows um, how important family visits are. You know, we show you what a family visit looks like, you know, that kind of stuff. It shows you that, you know, there are people who are incarcerated who shouldn't be like, these are people that you could have in your living room. This is not, you know, like, and and just how um, draconian the sentences are, but it's not a bunch of talking heads. You're actually seeing people train for and run a marathon inside prison and what that looks like. And in the middle of the marathon, they have alarms. So you can't even, you have to stop running, you know? So it's the toughest marathon ever. And the coaches are really inspirational. I'm also a volunteer with the Thousand Mile Running Club. I just count laps. I'm not a coach, but <laughs> um, I've actually counted laps for Rasan Thomas, <laughs> who he ran the marathon in 2017. He's one of the subjects of the film, and he's also on the board at Initiate Justice. And he's 
such an optimistic person, <laughs> but also very comedic in the film. So um, it's a very, I feel, very uplifting film. We've just finished the festivals. Uh, we've, we're just finishing up on festivals. Uh, last week, we actually showed the film in Sacramento to um, legislators, people, you know, like uh, McComer, who's the new secretary of CDCR. Um, Vicki Waters was there. So she's the new public safety cabinet member under the governor who replaces Chris Applegate, if you know about the structure of things. And so um, we're grateful that uh, people inside have been able to see it. So um, we definitely had it showing on CCTV at, at San Quentin, but also now CDCR has allowed it to be shown in all the prisons. Um, and so we just hope that it inspires people and it changes hearts and minds, but I'll put, I'll put links. Oh, and we're having our theatrical release, which means that it's being released in theaters to everybody, September 22nd in LA, San Francisco and New York. So I'll put links in, in the chat. Thanks. Sorry for taking up so much time, but <laughs> I think this stuff will help change hearts and minds. Yeah, it's also interesting. Please do put chat uh, links in the chat. And I'll also add one about the running club at San Quentin, because when we visited, I think it was the beginning of August that we visited. Adrian, I don't know. So if you if you remember when but when IJ went in, um, the, it, they were so excited about it. So I have a link to their newspaper. Um, did an article about it. So I'll also post that, but yes. Also, um, also, sorry, I just want to interrupt. One, and it's a surprise at the end, but like uh, two of the three main subjects have been released and Mark Kell, the gazelle, he actually ran the Boston Marathon like a month after release. But oh, wow. 40, all four, you know, 45 people in the running club have been released and there has been zero recidivism. So it says a lot about programming. You know, there's a programming bill out there this year as well. So yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for sharing those, Crispy. I I love like documentaries, films, anything that like really like it said, like you said, changes your heart and your mind. Um, I think film is such an incredible way of impacting people and reaching people, just like music, right? So thank you so much for sharing those. Um, I definitely encourage everybody to check them out if you get a chance to, or, or when you get a chance, please check those out um, and share also, share within the community, share with family, share with friends, um, let folks know that, hey, there's a whole running uh, club situation going on for like marathon training behind inside prison walls. Um, I think people would be really like excited to hear about that, but also some people might be really surprised um, to hear and learn about that. So please continue to share those types of things. Um, and thank you all for everybody who is continuing to drop resources and, and just different things in the chats, really, really appreciate it. Um, so we're at about the 7.30 mark, well, 7.25. Um, and so I wanted to uh, also, again, just redirect and make space, create space for folks to share whatever is on their heart um, at this point as it relates to the work that we all do, the passions that we all have. Um, I, I haven't shared a bill. So I'm actually going to share um, about a bill that may pass, but I'm hoping that it doesn't. Um, I haven't checked on where the status of it is, but if folks have not heard, um, there was a bill um, by Senator Grove SB 14 um, that was being talked about as if it was going to make child trafficking a felony um, and people were going to go to jail for a very, very long time and then this, that, and the third. Um, the coalition that I set on, um, the Justice for Survivors Act Coalition, um, and a whole bunch of us actually kind of spoke out against the bill. Um, one of our coalition members, April Grayson, actually testified um, against the bill, um, talking about how survivors of exploitation and trafficking, um, particularly black and brown and indigenous survivors, um, can get caught up in this piece of legislation um, because we're not being identified as victims or survivors as folks are going through the criminal court process. Um, and so, that bill created a huge controversy a couple months ago. I'm not sure if folks caught that or, or seen it. Um, X, Twitter, whatever its, whatever its name is now, was very much ablaze. 
um, a lot of like really nasty things were said about a lot of people, um, but it was really a lot of the messaging was was geared towards like making it seem like people didn't care about children, um, young people, people in general being trafficked and exploited in our communities, which is not the case. Um, what the bill is actually going to do um, if it succeeds and passes into law is still perpetuate racism and still perpetuate the three strikes rule um, as opposed to actually preventing harm in our communities. And so definitely encourage folks to go read up about that bill. I believe it is is going to the Senate floor, or no, excuse me, the assembly. Um, it's on the assembly side. So I don't know if it's fully passed, um, but I know that it was a huge issue um, on both sides um, for sur the survivor community as well. Um, so definitely please read up on that bill um, and contact your representatives. Um, state representatives and share how you feel about the bill and about what it's intending to do and things like that. I never want to tell anybody how they should feel, um, particularly about issues when it comes to exploitation and trafficking. So I just want to encourage everybody to read up about the bill. I'll actually drop it into the chat in a little bit. Um, but yeah, just read up on it, decide for yourselves whether that is something that you would want to support or oppose, um, and generate conversations about it. Because I think one of the things that really um, happened, particularly with SB 14, is it generated a lot of conversation about who um, gets to be identified as a survivor um, in the criminal court process when it comes to domestic violence, exploitation, trafficking, all of that stuff. Um, and so really creating more space and conversations to be able to talk about these nuances. I see your love for April in the chat. Um, I'll make sure she knows that there's love for her over here at IJ. Um, but but yeah, it, it was a difficult bill to get through. Um, so we're hoping it doesn't make it all the way, um, but the governor did sort of get involved and it was a whole big messy political thing a couple of months back. So um, I'm gonna stop talking because I don't wanna take up too, too much space. Um, but definitely check that bill out, read up on it, um, and start having these conversations, right? Because again, as we know with anything else, whether it is deportation, whether it is healthcare, whatever it is, all of these things still intersect with incarceration. Um, and so it's up to us to do whatever we can to make sure that our communities aren't further harmed by bad bills that are working to continue harm and not repair or prevent the harm. Um, and Danielle, the bill number is a, a, B, SB 14. I'm actually going to drop the uh, information in the chat right now. The link. I have been, I've been switching ABs and SBs since watching both of the suspense file hearings on Fridays. Fridays. Now, now the letters just don't exist. They're just going back and forth. No. But um, I just wanted to echo what you were saying. Uh, well, first, yes, you're right. The bill is totally still moving forward. It got off the assembly suspense file and it is moving forward. Um, but I just really wanted to echo that kind of regardless of what you saw, what you may have seen online about the bill, those conversations weren't about the policy because what it comes down to is regardless of even the goal of the legislation, the way it's written, there are these unintended consequences of further criminalizing and penalizing survivors, right? Exactly what Adriana was just talking about. So regardless of what the original goals were, those the way that the bill's written, that's what would be happening. So yeah, it's always a good idea that we pay attention to these things and you let your senator know that you're paying attention. You let your assembly member know um, that you're paying attention to these things, not just the the headlines that we see on on Twitter or whatever it is, but also that you're paying attention to the policy and who would be left behind and who would be most affected. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, Sarah. And I see you, Effie. I'm going to get you in just a second. Um, but I also just wanted to um, just add on there, um, particularly about the language, because I do know that I think there was some language added um, to the bill language that's, that excludes um, survivors of human trafficking. However, currently right now, the court system does not adequately identify victims of human trafficking um, and survivors that are in the, the criminal justice process. And so um, they can say that, oh, we're not gonna prosecute survivors, but if you're not identifying who those survivors are, how is it that you are not going to prosecute them if you don't know who they are? 
Um, so again, just want to thank you again, um, Sarah, for just reiterating the piece about language and really understanding what bills are intending to do versus what the headlines are. Um, so thank you for that. Um, if folks have questions about SB 14 or anything else having to do with that type of um, issue area when it comes to gender-based violence or anything like that, um, you can always reach out to um, the co-sponsors of that bill, um, as well as um, you know, survivor organizations and things like that to really get an understanding of, of the issue. That being said, Oh, and Gerardo, Valerie dropped another resource for you in the chat, so make sure you you grab that as well. Um, but I want to pass the mic over to Effie, um, and I please please hope I'm saying your name right. Forgive me if I'm mispronouncing it, um, but want to turn it over to you um, for you to share. Are you there? I see you're not muted, but we can't hear you. I don't know, I'm wondering if the audio is connected. You might have to try reconnecting your audio, Effie, because we're you're not coming through on. Yeah, oh, there you are. There you go. He's trying. He's trying, y'all. They're trying. Can you know? I have a question. Uh, I'm Dr. Askia Ashanti. Does, does uh, IJ, well, let, let me first uh, state, this is my first Zoom conference with uh, IJ uh, initiate. Uh, just I received many newsletters from uh, this organization. And my question is, uh, is this organization still pursuing the amendment or the uh, repeal of the, of the 3X law? Three strikes. Oh, I think you're referring to the repeal three strikes movement. Yes, is, is that still active? Sarah, I'm going to pass it to you to answer that question because that's more of a policy question. Yeah, there are actually um, two different coalitions moving forward that are trying to end three strikes and initiate justice is actually not part of um, or not an official member of either one. But overall, we continue to support any existing effort to, to end and address three strikes. And I think um, in the file we we have the links to both of to both of those orgs. But if not, I can pull them up and put them in the chat so folks can figure out where they'd like to get involved. But Initiate Justice is not leading um, leading a campaign on three strikes. Um, yeah, because I think I was gonna make a suggestion as I noted. Uh... I'm Dr. Askia Shanti. I was just released from prison last year after serving 27 years on a three strike, uh, 25 life term on vehicle code 185 one drive without owner's consent because KDK is known as a joyriding. That's the beginning of 25 life for But uh, in 2020, instead of being released because President Trump was in power when the COVID epidemic and pandemic came in, that moved all the parole board dates back. Then when they put Dr. George Gascon in office, uh, he initiated a policy, uh, unlike, I think only five DAs in the whole state of California joined him, where it was the third strike, non-violent, non-serious, which my joy writing was. He, he recalled approximately 5,000 cases, only about 1,500 of them were granted by the court. You know, he has the power to recall the cases for the sentencing. 80% of the judges are, are, are denying it. But I, uh, while I was in custody, I was blessed to get my electrical, my carpentry diploma, associate bachelor of master's degree, picked up two doctors. THD doctor of theology and a JD doctor of jurisprudence. Uh, I was going to suggest that the repealing of the three strike law is probably highly unlikely. Uh, I was going to make a suggestion if IJ or initial justice was still part of the process that the move should be more to amend third strike and make it, uh, uh, well, actually in 2012, they made it where it's a violent, serious crime, but they had put these exceptions to the move. They was removed those exceptions out and make it mandatory for the uh, for the third strike to be resented if it's not about non serious, then uh, the, the state or the, the voter may be more receptive to that, as well as the court, if, especially if you make it a mandated for, for resentencing instead of discretionary the way it is now. 
yeah, we'll find those links um, either now or in the in the follow up so that you can definitely get involved with those coalition coalitions. I think um, they definitely value the lived experience that that expertise can lend. And I also think it just points to the the larger conversation that we're constantly having of can we really abolish whether it's three strikes or something else of can we really abolish this or do we need to start by taking a few bites out of the apple until the whole bite, apple's gone. But yeah, so so thank you. Thank you for sharing. Absolutely. And Effie, I see that you have returned. And so if you are ready, please feel free to unmute um, and share with us um, your thoughts, reflections, or any bills or campaigns that you would like um, additional support on. Can or if you have questions. You, can you hear me clearly now? Yes. Well, I don't have any bill. I just wanted to say kudos to the Abolition Is um, podcast team um, because I heard about the um, the podcast when I was still active, but I didn't actually get to listen until last month. So I did a marathon. A marathon, or is it a binge listening? <laughs> season one, season two, and then the mini, mini, mini episode or whatever you guys call those. So I'm just now halfway through season three, and I could relate to almost each and every episode. So that's all I wanted to say to say kudos to the team. And I've been sharing it on my own social media and to some of my friends in my organizations and whatnot to go listen to them. So that's all I wanted to say. Sorry, I had to change systems because I was having poor connection. No worries. I'm glad that you were able to reconnect and join us fully. Um, thank you so much for your love of the Abolitionist for Everybody podcast. Um, it is currently in season three. Well, season three finished um, and things like that. So season four would be next. Um, but thank you just so much. That podcast has been absolutely amazing. Um, I think we have like we've had like 40,000 listeners or something like that on that podcast. I think that was shared um, earlier today by somebody. So, yeah, it's a it's. It's an amazing podcast. We've had many of our organizers um, and even some of our members and supporters um, be guests on the podcast and things like that. Um, I was also featured on the podcast as well. It's such a dope experience. And so I will be sure to tell our comms manager, Michelle, um, that you binged the entire series, um, including the web, uh, the mini-sodes. Um, and things like that, and that you are are getting caught up and that you that you have such rave reviews for it and that you will be sharing it out. So thank you so much for that. Really, really appreciate that. And yeah, if, uh, if anybody else hasn't had the chance to listen to our current season or any of the episodes, definitely encourage folks to go take a listen. Thanks for dropping the, ch uh, the chat. Thanks for dropping the link in the chat, Sarah. Um, it's initiatejustice.org slash podcast. But as she said in the chat, you can also get this podcast anywhere. Podcasts are available. I listen to it on Spotify, but we also upload it to YouTube, um, Apple Podcasts, or whatever the podcast is for Apple um, and all the other spaces. So there's there's many spaces where you can listen to it. Um, and we even have transcripts on each of the episodes. So um, if you are the type of person that likes to read along things it helps you process things a little bit easier we have those available as well and you can find those on our website so thank you for that love um so we are at 7 41 thanks jasmine for joining us appreciate you see you next time um but this has been such a dope meeting um thank you all so much for joining um don't want to end super super duper early um, so if there's any other thoughts or reflections or anything that folks want to share to the greater community, now is your chance. Um, but I will sort of start us towards um, the close. Yes, if you haven't checked out the art gallery, um, it's virtual. So please go over to the link that Sarah just shared and check out the art gallery. It really is amazing. We have some amazing artwork this year um, for 2023. So please check that out, support. Also, please, um, also I have a note from uh, Inside Membership as well. Um, so don't forget that we still have 
um, original art pieces of artwork from the 2023 Art Gallery um, artists, as well as original artwork from other Initiate Justice artists as well. So head over to our shop on Instagram and Facebook, and you can find us um, on either of those apps by searching at Initiate Justice. So any social media that we have, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, X, whatever it is, um, it's always going to be at Initiate Justice. Um, so head on over to the art gallery, take a look, head on over to the shop. Um, we have t-shirts, we have postcards. Um, so all of that wonderful, wonderful stuff. And thank you, Danielle, for buying a shirt. Um, we really, really appreciate it. And I know the artists appreciate it also as well. And so if there are no additional questions, um, uh, or anything. Oh, go ahead, Gerardo. Um, I, okay, you know how uh, you guys have the LIFO meetings, um, you know, once a year, maybe twice a year. Um, I was asking, or well, my question is, if somehow or another, um, they can do something on your side to try to create that on this side um, for a, some type of LIFO gathering. There's a lot of guys here, as I mentioned, we don't have that opportunity as we do on the other side, so we can start kind of interacting on both sides of the border. Because eventually, many will end up coming over here. And I've been in contact with the fellows that have been deported to the Philippines and Samoa who actually want to move to Mexico so their families can cross the border and spend time with them. Because it's too expensive for family members to travel across the ocean. Then one family member comes to Mexico, right, right in TJ. So they can cross the border and visit with them, because uh, you know people from around all over the U.S. have been deported, and it's a pretty good idea if they were just to move somewhere close to the border, so they can just cross the border. It would be way less expensive, and it would be easier on everybody because the flights, that's on a family tow, and if you have kids and so forth, you travel from Philippines, Samoa, China. Um, that's one thing there, and the other one was just for a life to gather. So there's a lot of fellows here I can, they would be very happy if there was somehow another organization can assist with that. And I know people, because de deportees or I mean, uh, parolees on the U.S. side can cross the border and there would be no issue for them to visit with anybody on this side as well. So just want to put that out there. Thank you for doing uh, this. No, absolutely. As always, thank you for putting things out there. Um, I love it when people put things out there because that's the only way that we're going to be able to grab hold of them um, and make an idea out of it and turn it into a policy or whatever it is that we need to do. Um, so thank you so much for that, Gerardo. I dropped my email again in the chat. Um, so I'd love to connect with you offline just to learn a little bit more about you and how Initiate Justice could potentially support X, Y, and Z. Um, um, and things like that. So yeah, please reach out to me as well as anybody else that's on the call this evening. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any additional questions or anything like that. Um, as always, I want to remind folks about our community or our committee meetings this month. So reminder, actually, I'll share the slide one more time. Put that up for folks to remind us of upcoming meetings. And so our inside organizing team, again, hosting the volunteer committee meeting on the 13th. Um, so join them to learn about supporting inside organizers and the inside organizing program. And then the community action committee being hosted by our policy team that is on Wednesday, the 27th at 530. You can find the RSVP links on our website at initiatejustice.org slash calendar. So those are our upcoming meetings um, for this month. As always, our next member meeting, um, our next monthly member meeting will be on uh, the first Wednesday of October, which I believe is October 4th. I don't have the date in front of me, um, but I think it's October 4th. Um, so with that meeting, I'm really excited about, we're going to be featuring guests from different counties from the Register of Voters office. So the Registrar of Voters, um, and just to learn more about how those offices in their local communities are supporting people who are impacted by incarceration, but through educating them about their right to vote, um, see what they're doing in county jails, um, and see how they are um, assisting folks as they get released um, and being able to re-register to vote. So really exciting to learn more about what the registrar does. Every county has one. 
Um, and so we're really excited to just bring them into our space to learn a little bit more about that position and how we as organizers, community members um, can get involved with those offices to continue to support and build up our communities. Um, Marcus, I see your hand, go ahead. Hey, good evening, good evening everybody. Um, it's been about a year and a half since my last uh, time that I've attended one of the one of the meetings uh, due to scheduling uh, conflicts with the uh, school. But so I've been out. I've been actually out the loop a little bit. I paroled back in uh, 2020, and there was nothing going on regarding my question at that time. So, uh, but my question actually uh, is pertaining to whether, while on parole, is there any legisl is there any legislation? Um, pertaining to being able to reduce uh, parole, you, you know, generally you, you're on parole about two to three years, you know, for example, for me, I end up spending two years, but um, you know, that's a, that's a major hindrance to a lot of people. You know, you can't even travel outside the county without even being able to, without contacting your parole officer first. So that was something that I was always interested in is whether there's any, any legislation that are pertaining to that. Yeah, that's a great question, Marcus. So to my knowledge, and there's there's always things going on, so maybe it's not a bill, but might, maybe it's happening somewhere else or another way, so I'll look into it also. And um, I know IJ already has your email, so I can follow up with your question just to double check. But there aren't any pieces of legislation this year. There was a piece of re legislation pretty recently trying to streamline the amount of time. So it's supposed to be pretty limited to about a year right now. That doesn't actually end up happening. As you mentioned, it's more typical to see like two to three years. So I'll follow up and see um, what's in the pipeline right now. But I don't think that there's any current bills regarding just parole time uh, or like length. Right now that's moving through the process, but I'll follow up with you just to double check. That's a great question. All right. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, because I, I did my uh, my capstone for my uh, senior research project, basically um, addressing recidivism and a lot of the independent variables I was looking into to see all right, what the correlation is between partaking in, the, in certain resource accessibility and whether recidivism goes down. And, you know, there's certain things like um, having vocational training accessibility or uh, or psychotherapy, for instance, and education. Um, so that's actually what I plan on doing my grad work in. But before I start jumping in that field uh, and addressing that, that's what I, you know, something that I really wanted to catch up on and, and find out whether there's anybody's, whether they're putting forward uh, to be incentivized in order to partake into these programs and having accessibility to it and getting off parole early, if that makes sense. That does make sense. And all. I'll put some feelers out. If there's not a bill moving forward this year, maybe something else is happening or maybe it's something that needs to be moving forward. Um, but I'll put some feelers out to see. I'll, I'll, I'll put some feelers out. Yeah, that's, that's important. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. I love it. I love raising these issues and talking about it and getting things out there. Um, I actually wrote this, um, like actually wrote down in my notes, like bill idea session. Um, this ought to be a law type thinking. And I'm thinking one of our future member meetings um, for 2024, because the rest of the year is already planned out. But 2024, um, maybe we can have a member meeting where everybody can just bring their bill ideas and we can and we can talk through them. Um, so just an idea. So we'll see. Um, but thank you, Marcus, for, for bringing that forward. Um, we are at 751. So I do want to be respectful of folks' time. I know a couple of folks had to had to check out a little bit early. Um, so I don't have anything else or any other um, announcements or anything like that. I will just remind folks again about our committee meetings this month and then our um, member meeting next month in October. It will be Wednesday, October 4th, same time, same place. Um, and then as always, definitely check out our calendar on our website for any events. And then don't forget to RSVP and come to our member mixer at our LA office if you're in the LA area on Monday, September 18th. Uh, Erica, I see your hand. Go ahead, girl. I have a quick question. Does anybody know, my husband's down um, for resentencing back at county. Does anybody know how I can get hold of the Riverside 
to facilitate college education for the men that are going to stay there because resentencing takes about a year and he wants to continue to um, finish his college uh, talking about the man of <laughs> so is he going to be in county yeah he's so calling he's right be... now yeah he's if calling you, right... go... you can go ahead and answer that and follow up with one of us via email um, yeah. afterwards that way you can make sure you take that call yeah <laughs> of course I was about to say that um but I definitely want to um see if anybody can assist me because I want to make sure that if there's they facilitate already GED why can't they facilitate um college courses for for the men that are in there and who want to continue their and further their education so I'll I'll reach out to both of you I I, I got you guys' information but it's one of the things that I definitely want to start voicing and really getting out there for the jail systems I know we have programs for CDCR but I think it should also start being at the jail at, at the jails as well I agree I agree. All right. Have a good night, everyone. You too. And love to your loved one inside as well. Um, okay, I definitely will. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, and we have time for a couple of more questions. Um, so I saw um, Dr. Shanti, and then we'll go with Emiliano. So Dr. Shanti, um, I got your your hand first. So go ahead, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> no, uh, briefly, because uh, I just, like I said, I just had, 30 years in the, in the system and and a uh, doctor that's gone from LA County just recalled my case on that 1170 D uh, where they resentenced me to two years with Joyride Carry and they released me with no parole, no probation. To follow up on the, the gentleman's question, I think his name is McClement. There's been no movement in this in the past 50 years. And I, I mean, not, not to rain on the parade, if, if you, California's had this system in place almost, and you check the uh, average AB and, and jurors doctor in, in law, when you check California, I say see similar to California. If you when you release from prison, if you have a nonviolent case, you generally only serve one year parole. If you have a violent case, it goes up to, to three years. The the parole system is is highly uh, connected to to the prison system as far as the guards and the, the parole officers. The, and, and then you want to say to California, this is a multi multi billion dollar industry. It's it's the most complex and the most expensive uh, prison and parole system in in, in America. Second to the federal system, so uh, there's not going to really be no movement in in legislation. With, with if, if you're nonviolent, you only serve one year. If you got a violent crime, you serve five to three years. And if you're a lifer, you serve five five years of minimum. Uh, and as far as the other lady question about college in in the uh, county jail, once again, you can check with the sheriffs in Alpharetta County. Really, you don't see major college programs in the in the county jail system because in prison you got people in there doing 10, 20, 30 years. So it's easy to bring the college and university systems to the prison. When you talk about the county jail, generally it's not made for nobody to do over one year. Uh, people go on one year, generally it's somebody who have a, a trial type situation. The only exception to the rule is, I think, 10 years ago, they passed at AB 109, and a majority of those people that's in the county jail, most of them just high school educated. Uh, I, I think from experience, about 10% of the prison system is college or university oriented. 90% of them, uh, it's, it's just at the high school level. And then Prison 2020, it's not like it was 30, 40 years ago where most of the men came in with high school diplomas. Men were men. This is a whole, this is like Generation X or YC, whatever terminology you now. Most of half these guys don't even have high school diplomas, which is a shock. And, and the reading, the reading and their writing and their math is, is down. The 2020 prison is nothing like the prison was in the 70s and 80s and 90s when you had the dinosaur men in there, you know, when men were men. Now it's, you basically got boys in there. So, uh, but anyway, long story short, yeah, there's not going to be no big movement uh, on the county jail system because most people do under one year. So the, the, you get a degree, you, you need at least two years for associate, four years for your bachelor's, and you already know the time for a master doctor. So they're not, most definitely not going to offer no master doctor in the county jail. Anyway, that's why they're not going to have no real prison, I mean, university college set up for the county jail. It's, it's the time. You can do it for prison, but the county jail, you're too short a time. Yeah, there's always a there's always barriers with um, county jail. I know out here in, in my county in San Joaquin County, um, they've partnered with the County Office of Education um, to do a lot of great things inside our county jail. So um, it kind of always just depends on where you live. There is a little bit of a barrier because people are in there infrequently um, as opposed to long stretches of time. Um, so so there are barriers there, um, but doesn't mean they can't be overcome. 
um, just all about knowing your, your resources and things like that. But thank you, Dr. Ashanti. I think it's always important when we have um, a lived experience um, kind of perspective on these issues as well. Um, so we are just about at time, folks. Um, and so if I do see your hand, um, I do want to recognize that Emiliano had his hand up prior to, so I want to call on him just to make sure that he gets to get his question asked. Um, so I am going to ask that you keep it kind of short, Emiliano, because we are almost at time, um, but definitely want to um, get your question out there. And then um, if there's any other questions or anything that we weren't able to discuss or fully dive into or elaborate on today, please feel free to reach out to either myself or Sarah, um, and we'll we'll get back to you on, on any unanswered questions. But yeah, Emiliano, did you have a question that you wanted to get out before we end it? Yeah, I just wanted to know if you're going to send out an email to register for the in-person in the office. Yeah, yeah. So there'll All be right. a, there'll be an email. There was um a comp set on an email to the mailing list and things like that. It's also on our Instagram um and everything. And then the link, I can also redrop the link really quickly in the chat so you have that as well. Give me two seconds. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Copy, paste. All righty. There you go, Emiliano. Um, so I won't. You can't. Click it link. Obviously, I didn't put the HTTP, but go ahead and copy and paste. Um, but I'll send out an email. You're an organizer, so you're going to get the email anyway. Um, and then, yeah, we'll send out a recap email for this evening as well, just in case there's anything folks missed. Um, but thank you all so much for joining us. Thank this you. Evening, hanging out. You're welcome. Um, we have to get going. I want to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, but it was great hanging out, getting to know a couple of new folks. Um, I enjoyed seeing y'all interact with our space today. If this was your first time, please come back next month. We are grateful to have you here. Um, and thank y'all for showing up each and every day as activists, as organizers, as community members. So thanks, y'all. Have a good night, and we'll see you next time.